Welcome back, my friends. In last video, I have discussed about why we use or deploy project management in our working activities. In this part, we will learn the basics of project management process. But before we go to video, I would like to request you to subscribe to our channel. And if you like the video, do share it with your friends and also give your feedback and comments at the comments section below. So now let's move to understanding of project management processes. See, there are various theories about project management and these theories have been developed uh, over the years. For example, we have a system called Six Sigma. We have a system called Waterfall. We also have a system well established process called Agile process. And these depending upon, you know, the, the, the need as well as time, money, resources, etc. These processes are deployed in variety of activities. But for our understanding, which is more relevant for our translation management process, I have chosen a process which is widely accepted by major uh, companies. And these processes that we have just mentioned also deploy them. And in this, there are four elements. One is initiation, when you initiate something, right? The second one is after the initiation, you plan. This is planning a stage. And third stage is execution and control. When you start implementing your project and control them, you know, at variety of stages. And the fourth one is closer. You close and the project is over. You seek the feedback, implement it, and then build the client. So let's look at this, uh, you know, uh, the graph that we have just uh, developed. In this graph, you will see, uh, you know, we have inter entry phase. We enter. The initiation starts. When we are talking about, you know, a project, you start thinking about project is the entry point. But when you start seriously thinking about it, then it is the initial process. And when you become more serious, then you start planning, you know, what we have to do, what we have to do that, what, how much is the cost, how much is the time, who will do it, how, what are the resources available, how we will do it, you know, all these who, why, how and when and how much, etc. We have talked about it in our previous uh, video. And you will start uh, executing it once everything is decided, you enter into the execution mode and parallelly you put checkpoints at, at everywhere. So that whenever any, any anything critical, whenever anything improvement needed, you improve upon. And this is a continuous process, you know, until you complete your project and until you deliver it to your client and until you get the funds, until you get the feedback either, uh, even. So as long as these things are there, you know, they are continuous process. A project which has already been executed is very helpful for us because it also helps us to, to create a kind of blueprints for future. It also helps us to understand risk and rewards for the future. So experience matters, you know, in, in any project. So don't forget that if a project is over, your your thing is gone. Your project is over. If the client has got the project, you know, but what is left is your is, is the fees that you received plus the experience that you gain. So that is the reason why you know experienced project managers are very valuable for any organizations. They need because they are the ones who have undergone you know the process. They have deployed it. They have used it. They have done hit and trial, and they have you know they know uh, they can foresee problems in advance, and they also know how to solve those problems. So therefore, the experienced project managers are very important for any organizations when we are talking about deployment of any project management process. So let's move on to our another set of activities that we have just uh, you know understood in the graph. And the first phase that comes into picture is planning. So in planning, what we do? We first analyze what are the activities to be done that we call scope. We define the cost, we define the timeline, we define the human resources and once all these things are stabilized, we enter into another mode and more serious mode and that is scheduling. So what we do in scheduling, whatever plans that we have done, we for every plan, we define a timeline, we define a schedule, we define also schedule for supply of human resources, supply of goods, services, materials required, many times health benefits, health, uh, recreation, communication. So everything is scheduled so that we, whatever we have planned, we are able to do a better you know, management of that activity and control. How we control? That comes into another stage when we are doing execution of the work. In control, what we do? 
So whatever uh, plan and schedule that we have decided, we work on that, number one. And while working, when there is some problem going on, we correct it. Or something which has already been planned and which is already established, we allow it to happen. And if there is breakdown, we control that, we improve upon. If there is any additional improvement needed, if there is any additional human resource needed, if there is replacement needed, if there is a machine breakdown, we replace that and we do it in a very, very planned way and monitor each and every activity at stages, either personally by the project manager or by deployed, you know, assistants or supervisors who are involved at various levels. And in doing all these activities, there is a communication going on between all the stakeholders, because if we do not communicate, we will not be able to understand immediate problems. Right. And above and all, the, the, whatever is happening is documented because documentation later on helps you, you know, understand in totality what is going on in the project and what is there, what, is, what are the strengths, what are the weaknesses. If there is something slow going on there, you can deploy more people to speed it up. If something has happened quickly and if human resources are free there, you can engage them in some other activities. So this kind of continuous monitoring, continuous improvement, you know, identifying the mistakes, identifying the errors, and then improving upon, documenting it, improving upon, documenting it. This is how we also, through project management, apply total quality control. In We will talk about total quality control uh, in our, you know, when we will be talking about quality management in our translation process, we will talk about that. But for time, for the time being, let's understand that when we deploy all these stages, in any of our projects, it becomes easy for us to do it, number one, control the cost, number two, do the work effectively, make the client happy, and grow business. So my friends, if whatever we have learned in this class, as well as in the last class, if we deploy that in our translation process, it becomes easy for us to effectively manage a project. We can manage a small project well, we can scale up medium large, large and extra large one man enterprise two thousand man enterprise it's very stratified structured and then execution becomes easy my friends that's all for today before you go i again request you if you like the video please do subscribe the channel press the bell button for latest updates and stay tuned till then goodbye and adios